Uh, good morning, sir. Can you uh, see and hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Can I call Mr Gilding, please? Peter, can you? I do solemnly. I do solemnly. Sincerely and truly. Sincerely and truly. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr. Gilding. As you know, my name is Jason Beer, and I ask questions on behalf of the inquiry. Can you give us your full name, please? Christopher James Gilding. Uh, thank you very much for coming to give evidence to the inquiry today and for the witness statement that you have previously provided. We're very grateful. Uh, can you look at the witness statement, please? Yes. It should be in the hard copy bundle in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it should be 19 pages in length, excluding the exhibits page and exhibits and dated the 7th of September, uh, sorry, 7th, 7th of December, <laughs> and on the uh, last page there should be your signature. Is that your signature? It is, yes. And are the contents of that statement true to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, yeah, yeah, they are, yes. Thank you very much. A copy of that witness statement will be uploaded to the inquiry's website, and therefore I'm not going to ask you questions about um, every part of it. Do you understand? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can we start, please, with your background and experience. I think you joined the post office in 1977, is that right? Indeed, yes. And you left in 2016? Yes, that's correct. And therefore you were employed by the post office for, by my calculation, 39 years? 39, that... yes. And um, would you consider yourself to be a loyal company employee in that time? I was indeed, yes, I felt so. Between 19... 77 and 90, uh, the late 1980s, I think you describe it as in your statement, you worked in Crown branches, is that right? That's correct, yes. First as a counter clerk and then as an assistant branch manager. That's right. So that's your first job, as it were. Uh, well, yes, yes. And uh, um, progressed through the um, branch management. So from assistant branch manager, became a branch manager, and uh, I managed at... Uh, pretty much every branch of my office in Hampshire over the, over the years. And then between the late 1980s and 1992, you were a regional reserve trainer, it's described as. So, yes, yeah, so that was a role that was um, sort of an add-on to myself being an assistant branch manager at the time. So as a reserve instructor, um, if there were um, any courses due to take place that they didn't have staff available for, then I was asked to uh, go and run those courses. Um, then I think in 1992 you became a, um, a Crown Branch Manager. That's right, yes. And it, you stayed a Crown Branch Manager um, until uh, 2009, is that right? That's right, yes. And if you just look at paragraph three of your witness statement, please where you say that, 1992 to um, 2009, and it says 27 years as a Crown Branch Manager. I think that must mean 17 years. 17, yes. yes. <laughs> and in that time as a Crown Branch Manager, did you um, use Horizon after it was introduced in about 2000? Indeed, yes. Uh, would you have used it on a daily basis? Absolutely, yes, yes. And so that's your sort of third role, if you like, after being the regional um, reserve trainer. And then between 2009 and 2013, you were what's described as a, fee, a field team leader in network support. And is this right? That meant that you managed a team of trainers and auditors? That's correct, yes. And did you hold the title training and audit manager? No, I was a field team leader. Um, just look at um, paragraph 9 of your witness statement on the second page where it says um, under the heading my roles in relation to the Horizon IT system, branch manager which we've dealt with and then training and audit manager. So, so the field team leader was the job title, um, training and audit manager was what the purpose of the role was. Un understand. And um, during that time, uh, you would have used Horizon in training events, presumably? Yes, indeed, yes. Um, During branch audits? Absolutely. And in um, visits to offices, assisting postmasters to investigate um, uh, balance inquiries? That's very true, yes. 
and then your next role between 2013 to 2015, you were seconded for, I think, a two-year period within that those three years mm -hmm. um, to the Horizon Mediation Investigation Team. That's correct, yes. And I think also looking at paragraph nine there, you were a team leader. That's right, yes. So um, within that mediation team, I was ma line managing a team of, uh, I believe it was six people. Thank you. And then in 2015, you returned to the field team leader res uh, role where you stayed for about a year or so. And in 2016, you took voluntary redundancy. That's correct, yes. I'm going to come back to some of those roles in a moment, but I just want to focus on something now that we haven't heard um, much about so okay. far. And it's your role in the Horizon Mediation Investigation Team. Mm -hmm. uh, as we've said, that was for two years in 2013 to 2015. And by way of background, would this be right, that um, the post office had um, established um, an investigation into some issues about the operation of the Horizon Scheme following a, a campaign for the Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance, the JFSA. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, I do remember that. And um, the mediation team um, that I was asked to join um, was to look at um, the data for some of the offices that were involved in the um, in the scheme. And so, um, do you remember, it, um, to put this in context, the setting up of the scheme um, following some work done by, amongst others, um, an MP called James Arbuthnot? Um, I remember the scheme being set up, but I was not involved in any part of that. Do you remember the involvement of Second Sight? Uh, they were... Um, um, I'm trying to think what the what the title was, but yes, they were involved in um, with the mediation program. Yes. Can you remember what their? I mean, we know an awful lot. I want to ask you what you <coughs> can remember from um, seven or eight years ago. Um, their their role was to, my understanding was their role was to look at um, if there was any. Um, discrepancies within the horizon system from a, a software point of view um, and then to make recommendations based on what they found and w was looking at it generally was um, this the position the post office had offered a scheme to sub postmasters so that individual sub postmasters could have an opportunity to raise their concerns yes. about discrepancies or issues with the horizon scheme that Second Sight could investigate. You were not seconded to Second Sight at all. You were still working for the post office. No, very much working for the post office. And what did your work consist of when you were a team leader on the uh, mediation investigation team? Uh, so um, we were allocated, my team were allocated uh, certain cases. So when I say cases, branches that had um, become part of the mediation scheme. So they entered the mediation scheme um, and then we were allocated uh, individual cases and um, we would work uh, primarily uh, as a pair and um, investigate the horizon data to try and uh, ascertain how the losses had occurred um, according to the data that was provided from the horizon system. And I think you told me uh, earlier how many people were in your team. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I believe it was six. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recall, but I'm not sure. But it was around six in Thank my you. team. And who um, uh, was there more than one team? Yes, there were there were um, two teams within um, the, from the line manager that I worked for. There were, there were two teams. Yeah. And who was the line manager that you worked for? Uh, Catherine Alexander. Were there any other teams other than those two uh, uh, investigating sorry, yes, you're quite Horizon right. issues? You're quite right. There was uh, so we were the South team. There was a North team <coughs> as well, uh, based in Scotland. Uh, and um, 
trying to recall. I think um, I think it was Wendy Mahoney was the team leader for the North. Thank you. I just want to look at the approach that you took um, in the course of that two-year period investigating discrepancies raised by um, sub-postmasters and um, others. Mm -hmm. Can we look, please, at paragraph 106 and 107 of your witness statement, please, which is on page 18? Thank you. Yes. And in that um, paragraph, yeah. under the heading Bugs, Errors and Defects, you say, I always operated on the statement received from Fujitsu that Horizon was, quote, the second most secure system in Europe, end quote. I personally was never aware of any issue or problems with Horizon. All of my dealings with sub-postmasters and staff were based on Horizon being a robust accounting system. Um, when did you receive that statement from Fujitsu that it was the second most secure system in Europe? Uh, so that was a statement that was used when we had when I was in the Crown Network and we had our very initial training into the introduction of Horizon, um, I attended a two-day uh, course for, that all branch managers would have attended and um, that was a statement that was used as part of the introduction to that program um, that um, the Horizon system um, was robust. And um, yeah, as, as it says there, they, they were very... Um, um, very confident that this was a very secure system. You use language there that you received the statement from Fujitsu. So, the, the, sorry, the, the, the statement was uh, as part of the training given by uh, whoever the trainers were at that time. So it would have been a post office trainer, not a Fujitsu. Um, but it was a, a statement that they were obviously given to, to pass on as part of the training that to to show how strong the, the the system was. And so the people that were training you said, we have been told by Fujitsu that the system is the second most secure in Europe. Yes, yes. And um, you have um, added that you were personally never aware of any issue or problems with Horizon. And it was, um, to your knowledge, a robust accounting system. Absolutely, yes. Uh, when you say that you operated on the basis of that statement, do you mean that you believed what Fujitsu said in that statement without investigating the merits of it? Uh, yes, that's true, yes. And so you, you mean by that statement you operated on the basis that the statement must be true? Yes. Does that mean that because you operated on the basis that the statement must be true, you were therefore sceptical or disbelieving of any suggestion that there may be errors, bugs or defects in Horizon? Um, I'm not sure sceptical is the right word, but um, um, I, never, I didn't see any evidence to, to say that there had been any problems. If you... So, were operating on the basis that the statement must be true, mm -hmm. but why would you look for any evidence that there, um, there might be errors, bugs or defects? Um, because that was the role I was asked to do, um, and I was looking at the, um, the data that was provided to, to try and identify um, how the, the losses had occurred in the branch. Um, but. All of that was under the assumption that the horizon data was um, solid and true. And that assumption was based on something that you had been told in a, a training exercise, what, a decade earlier? Yes, yes. And, and also, as when, um, when we were part of the mediation team, um, we, I personally and other members of the team, did inquire with our, our team leader as to whether um, we were 100% confident with the data that we were working on because there would have been no point in interrogating the data if it was known to be false and we were assured that the data was solid. And who gave you that assurance? Uh, that was the, my team leader, it was Catherine Alexander.
when you said we asked, um, do, do you mean my, uh, myself and my team when we were um, seconded onto the mediation team? Um, obviously, we wanted to make sure that we were um, working with good evidence and, and not information that was going to be um, corrupted in any way because there was no point in investigating data if it wasn't true. Well, obviously not. To the best of our knowledge. <laughs> and you got what a verbal assurance. No, this data is yeah, solid, verbal. robust and reliable. Yes, nothing written, just verbal. And no, there are no problems, no errors, bugs or defects in Horizon that could be causing these discrepancies. That's correct, yeah. Um, can we look, please, at poll 406581? Sorry, which page are we on? It's, it's going to come up on the screen for oh, you. Oh, right. OK, thank you. This is a document um, that you wouldn't, I think, have seen at the time, but it's been shown to you in preparation for um, the, these hearings. Yes. And... Um, it's um, an advice of um, Brian Altman, um, King's Council. It's dated um, the 15th of October 2013. I'm, I'm not going to go to the back end of the document to establish its date. Just take that from me. And the document concerns a review by him of past prosecutions undertaken by a firm of solicitors called Cartwright King mm -hmm. on behalf of the post office. Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember Mr. Altman? Uh, I met him briefly once. Can we look, please, at um, the third page of the advice? <coughs> and then at paragraph four... Mr. Altman says, regarding the process by which I have been asked to conduct my review, and by reference to each in the above process list in chronological order, he sets out how he went about his pro uh, the process of fulfilling his instructions. And then if we go over the page, please, and look at the top of the page, point three of his instructions... Um, he says, on the 19th of September 2013, I attended Guildford Classroom Training Office, where I received a day's training on the Horizon system. Um, Chris Gilding, Network Support Team Leader, trained me. Andy Holt, Business Relationship Manager, was on hand to um, assist and answer <laughs> questions. Is that the occasion that you're referring to when you said you briefly met him? Yes. Did you give him a day's training? I did, yes. And do you remember that in the um, Guildford classroom training office? Yes, I remember being in the Guildford training office and um, over uh, with um, training for legal teams um, over a period of a few months, I was asked to do three different training sessions. Um, this was one of the ones that I undertook, and um, there were other sessions where I had six representatives uh, from the legal team. And the point of the one-day training was just to give them uh, an oversight of what the equipment looked like and how it was used uh, from a user interface point of view. Um, we also looked at the reports that could be drawn from the system and how they were interpreted. Uh, did you uh, undertake balancing training? We did a balancing exercise. Um, so they were given um, a handout with some transa transactions to put through, um, as you would do in a, in a live situation. And then um, they were shown the balance procedure and talked through the balance procedure. and. Um, at the end of the balance procedure, we looked at how many discrepancies that they, or any discrepancies that they've managed to um, identify as part of the exercise that we'd done. 
So, i.e., the, the person you were training their own user error? Yes. Okay. In the course of this training, you were presumably still working on the basis that um, the statement you'd received um, indirectly from Fujitsu, uh, namely that there were no problems whatsoever with Horizon, that it was reliable and robust. Indeed, yes. yes. Do you remember, was there any conversation about that in the course of this training? Uh, no, I don't remember any, any conversation on that subject. What did you understand the purpose of the training to be? Um, the purpose of the training was, uh, as I mentioned, was just to give uh, the legal team an oversight of... Um, uh, do you mean an overview? Overview, sorry. <laughs> an overview of the, the equipment and how it was used and how the uh, staff using the equipment would interact with the, the user interface. And there was no discussion about bugs, errors and defects? No. Thank you. That can come down. Can we look back at your witness statement, please, at um, paragraph 25, which is WITN 0538 at page 4? Just wait for it to come up on the screen. Can we see it, um, paragraph 25, you say, I was never made aware of any bugs or defects with Horizon, and my view was that it was a robust system, as all of the accounting errors I came across as a crown manager were due to inputting errors by staff members. Presumably now, in the light of what you know, you accept that with the benefit of hindsight, you were proceeding on an erroneous assumption? Uh, yes, from, from what I now know, um, but that was not, you know, not my belief at the time. You now know, is this right, that because of um, litigation and the findings in the civil courts and in the criminal courts, and indeed from some of the evidence that the inquiry has heard, that um, there were a series of bugs, errors and defects within the Horizon system from when it was rolled out until perhaps um, uh, 2016? Um, I personally have not seen anything uh, about what those defects were. So I, I'm, to this day I'm still unaware of what the bugs or defects were. You um, say in this paragraph that every error you came across was down to the member of staff. It was always their fault, never the system. Uh, yes, any errors that I uh, identified were to either from uh, staff inputting incorrectly onto the Horizon system or uh, more often it would be not actually the inputting into the Horizon that was the, the issue, it was what they physically did with the cash and stock. But obviously what they recorded on Horizon was not necessarily the same as what they were doing with the cash and stock, so hence a discrepancy would appear. Did no one in the 16 years or so that you were a post office employee whilst Horizon was in operation ever say to you, I think the computer's the problem, not me? Um, yes, they, <laughs> I would have heard that statement. <laughs> um, but it was always untrue? Um, I had no evidence to suggest otherwise. What inquiries did you make in the, as to the reliability of the data that the system was producing? Um, none, really. No, no, I was just... Um, so how can you say that I had no evidence that it wasn't the computer, it was always the member of staff, if you never made any inquiry? So the, I suppose what I'm saying is that the, the data I would look at um, from the Horizon system... Um, always seem to be robust. How could you tell? Um, just from uh, experience of looking at that information. Experience of looking at a screen? 
No, uh, reading the the uh, transaction and event logs that the system produced. Now you performed a variety of roles, as we've seen, training people, um, being a supervisor for training people, mm -hmm. um, auditing branches, being a supervisor for those auditing branches, and then investigating alleged um, discrepancies in the course of the mediation scheme. And the only thing in all of that time you ever found was that it was always the sub-postmaster's fault or the counter-staff's fault, is that right? Um, I had, I, I, I didn't come across evidence to suggest anything else other than that. You say in paragraph 26 of your witness statement, my view of the robustness of the system didn't change over time um, as the losses attributed to Horizon only appeared to occur in sub-post offices. I'm not aware of any major losses in Crown offices. The Horizon system installed in all branches, the branch types across the network, was um, identical. Uh, what are you trying to say by that paragraph, please? Um, I'm just saying that... Um uh, any losses that I was asked to look at regarding horizon errors, uh, horizon um, data, or was always with sub offices. I was never asked to investigate any losses within Crown branches. I see. This um, attitude of mind that you had, that the system was the second most secure in Europe, that it was robust that there were never any errors, bugs or defects in it and that all and any issues were the fault of sub-postmasters or counter-staff. Did that remain for the entirety of the 16 years that you worked whilst Horizon was in operation? Yes, it was, yeah. And so you carried that attitude of mind into your work as a trainer and as a manager of trainers, as an auditor, Yes. and a manager of auditors, and when investigating allegations of horizon cause shortfalls. Yes, indeed. I'm just going to address very briefly your work as an auditor mm -hmm. and a team leader of auditors. That statement can come down now. Thank you. I'm going to address this briefly, um, as it may be that you will returning, be returning to the inquiry in one of its later phases when we look at um, individual cases. Okay. So as an auditor, I think it's essentially for four years, is this right, between 2009 when you stopped being a Crown Branch Manager and 2013 when you took up the role of team leader in the mediation investigation team. Um, that It may have been a, a shorter period than that. When I joined the training team in 2009, we, we were um, just a training team. Um, and uh, I believe it was about 2011, but I'm not sure of the exact date, there was a, a restructuring of the field support team and the training and audit teams were amalgamated into a field support team. Thank so you. before then they were two separate. Okay, so it might be for the first two of the four years you were just training. That's correct. And it was only for the second half that you were training and auditing. Yes. Okay, I understand. Um, I was going to ask you about that later. Um, the merger of the audit and training functions, mm -hmm. why was that undertaken? So on the face of it, they're not natural bedfellows. Um, my understanding, it was to try and make a um, better use of the resource, as in the people that we had available within the field support team, um, so that... Um, because it was a, a national team, um, by having multi-skilled trainers and auditors, um, it would reduce the amount of travel that the audit team were having to make because we would have more people uh, across a wider geographical spread. I see. So your understanding was that it was for sort of business pragmatic reasons yes. rather than because of a, a natural affinity or similarity between the skill set needed for both. No, it was it was um, it was a restructure of the field support function, 
um, and it was, as I say, to, to improve the coverage over a geographical spread. Um, but, See, sorry. sorry, but I will say is that um, coming from the training background, going into audits, we were very much that, uh, treating the audits as a support function rather than a, a punitive visit. It was always there to support the sub-postmasters with any issues or questions that they may have had. Okay, so uh, the, it, uh, audit was, it is the wrong word to describe so an audit, it. Yeah, so an audit. You, you, you were supporters and helpers. Yeah, so basically we were asked, uh, we would be um, asked to attend an office. Um, and, and, and who would you be asked by? Uh, so there was a um, scheduling team based in Salford who would um, allocate. Um, the... Um, selection criteria for which offices to visit um, there was a team in our financial department in Chesterfield who would uh, identify from the data that they were looking at from the offices if there was an office where they thought maybe there would be a, a reason for a visit to take place. And what would be a reason for a visit to take place? Um, it might well be that there was uh, a high volume of cash declared as being in the office but when the office was asked to return some of the cash to the um, cash centre, that they were not returning it. So something um, suspicious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was also a programme of random audits that would just be... So every office was due to have a visit once every five years on a random basis. So the, the request um, didn't come from the sub-postmaster? No. And so it wasn't a... I need some help and assistance. Not from that audit point of view, no. And you were a team leader of the auditors? Yes. Uh, how many people in the team did you lead? Uh, it varied. Um, at one stage, uh, I believe I had 15, um, and then it varied between 9 and 15, depending on which area I had responsibility for. And where were you based? Uh, I was based in Southampton, and, um, and what was your geographical area? <laughs> so my first geographical, um, <clears throat> are we talking just the audit function or the training function? Just the audit function, please. So just the audit function um, would have been uh, Hampshire, Berkshire, Dorset, uh, Devon, Cornwall. And where were the staff that you led based? Geographically spread over that area. Was there um, a central office to which they would come? No. No, they, they were all field-based. And who was your line manager? At that time, I can't remember. But were they based in the Southampton office? No. Did and, you and again, it wasn't the Southampton office, it was my home address. I was I see. at home, sorry. Yes. And the others out in the field, they were based at their homes rather yes. than post office offices? Yes, that's correct. Did you carry out audits yourself? Uh, I was part of the audit team, yes. And so I attended some audits. And if it was an audit of a Crown office, um, I would lead the audit. Um, and that was felt necessary because you were dealing with managers of a certain post office grade. And um, so the Crown Office audits were always led by a field team leader to make sure that there was somebody of the same grade. Because that, that had caused issues in the past where a field advisor had led a Crown audit, challenged uh, a Crown manager about something, and um, because of the, there was some... Um, they tried to pull rank. Yes. <laughs> and, and so when you were carrying out these audits, you were investigating... Um, uh, discrepancies, shortfalls, imbalances, and sometimes suspending sub-postmasters? Uh, no, I never suspended a sub-postmaster. That was not my remit. Um, our job as um, auditors were to attend uh, the office to look at, to get a report from the Horizon system of the cash and stock that should have been on hand, to do a physical check of the cash and stock that was there, uh, make a comparison of the two and if there was any discrepancies we would then report that to a contracts advisor so each of the sub 
post offices had a contract advisor. So our role was purely to identify what was there in the branch and report to the contracts advisor and they would then make a decision on how to proceed. That be either that could be that the office was reopened um, and the contracts advisor would speak direct to the sub postmaster about how any shortfalls would be repaid. Uh, or it might be that they advised us to close the branch um, whilst investigations were undertaken by the contract advisor. And would that happen on the occasion of your first attendance? Yes. Okay. So this would be done on the phone, would it? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And sometimes you would close the branch there and then? We would, yes. If, if, if the contract advisor wanted the branch closed, uh, and it was always their decision, um, then we would um, advise the um, postmaster what the decision was, and we would um, close the branch, uh, secure the stock and cash, take, take those keys away from the branch and um, make sure that they were passed to the contract advisor. And so you wouldn't decide whether to sus suspend somebody? No, that was not my role. Um, did you um, carry out the suspension, i.e. tell somebody um, whose branch was closed and their keys taken away from them no, that they were suspended or was that done by somebody that, else? That was done over the phone by the contracts advisor. So you would hand a mobile to yes. the sub-postmaster and somebody at the other end of the phone would say, you're suspended? Would, would talk them through what, what their decision was and what, was, what the process was, yeah. And then you'd take the keys away and lock up? And That's correct. I just want to look, please, at... Um, a, um, a document just to work out um, whether this is you or not okay. um, that's referred to. It's um, poll 3029492. And we should have here um, a briefing pack prepared uh, by the post office, for the post office, um, for a meeting with James Arbuthnot, MP, and Oliver Letwin on the 17th of May 2010. Can you see that at the top? Yes. Um, now, this is a document that I think you wouldn't have seen at the time, but again, you've seen more recently because we've shown it to you. Indeed, yes. And the... Index to the contents notes what the pack contains. And at the bottom, there's a reference at point eight to the Yetminster case. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, Yetminster, I think, being a, a village in Dorset. That's correct. And um, you've told us already that your um, reach extended to, to Dorset. Is that right? That's right. Is it Dorset or Somerset? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, the internet suggests um, <laughs> Yetminster is in Dorset. Okay. <laughs> uh, if we go over the page, please, and um, look at the agenda for this meeting with the two MPs, we can see who was um, going to be present. Um, Messrs Arbuthnot and Letwin, and then Alice Perkins, the then chairman of the post office, Paula Venels, the then Chief Executive of the Post Office, Susan Crichton, the Legal and Compliance Director of Post Office, and Leslie Sewell, Chief Information Officer of the Post Office, and then um, Mr Ismay and uh, Miss uh, Vanden Bogert, and you'll see their job titles there. And yes, and if we um, just expand out a little bit, please, thank you. We'll see the agenda, and again, under uh, item 6B, um, we'll see the, uh, the review of what's described as the Tracy Merrick um, case. Um, we'll see in due course that that's a reference to Tra Tracy Ann Merritt um, and that Susan was going to lead on that. That's um, Susan Crichton, the Legal and Compliance Director at the Post Office. So if you just got to give you some context for this document, if we go over the next page, please. you can see that this is a list of key messages for the people that um, are going to um, uh, lead, um, Alice to start with, and then Paula Venels next. If you just scan. OK, 
can I just say, Jason, yes. at this stage, um, I was aware that this, although I'm not listed on the attendees, because I didn't attend the actual meeting, yes. I was aware that this meeting took place because, as we discussed earlier, where I was asked to show the workings of the Horizon system um, to the legal team, um, when this meeting was called, I was asked to attend um, the post office headquarters uh, they had what they called a model office, which was uh, a dummy office set up there. And I was asked to be there and available in case the members of parliament wanted to have a hands-on demonstration. Um, as it was, um, when the meeting was finished, I, I wasn't called. So um, I didn't participate in any way, but I was aware this meeting was taking place because I was there on standby in case. Thank you. And you weren't in the room? Not at all, no. Okay. No. Um, and then if we go over the page again, please, to um, page four on the briefing note of um, what was going to be said. Um, if you just scan that. And if you look at the second bullet point in the first box, although we recognise that Horizon is not perfect, no computer system is, it's been audited by internal and external teams. It's also been tested in the courts and no evidence of problems found. Would that accord with your view at this time? Indeed it would, yes. Did you contribute to this? No. Did you brief up the people that wrote this document? No. Um, and then the next bullet point, an upgraded version of Horizon was deployed two years ago. Both versions of Horizon were built on the same principles of reliability and integrity. Uh, would that match your own view? Yes, it would, yeah. Um, although we recognise Horizon is not perfect, no computer system is, it's been audited by internal and external teams. It's also been tested in the courts. That seems to be a repetition. That's a repetition. <laughs> of the earlier. Maybe it's to emphasise the point. Um, and then training is dealt with in the, um, the next paragraph or the next um, bullet point. If you just scan that. as to what um, it is said that uh, Miss Venels, I think, was going to lead on. Mm -hmm. And then if we go over the page, please. Um, under topic five, um, introduction to the case review, um, the, the messages were going to be, occasionally we do get incidents of fraud. Uh, the process, audit, internal review, interview, if it can't be resolved, then dismissal for Crown staff and um, court for sub-postmasters need to explain why. There seems to be a, a record there of a distinction between treatment of Crown staff and sub-postmasters. Was that something that you had experience of? Um, uh, yes, in, only in the fact that um, Crown staff were employed by Post Office Limited. Yes. Um, and um, SPMs yeah. were not. No, indeed. But the, the difference in treatment, if, if the incident could not be resolved, then dismissal for Crown staff, court for sub postmasters. Do you know what that's a reference to? Uh, no, I don't. No. Thank you. Um, and then there was going to be a review of the Joe Hamilton case. Um, the inquiry is very familiar with um, Josephine Hamilton's um, case. And it seems like the key facts, or the pitch was going to be, um, that there were cash holdings, the training was received, there were some audit findings. Ms Hamilton was in personal financial difficulties. She's provided an opportunity for an explanation, and she did plead guilty to fraud. And then, um, the uh, again, misdescribed as Tracy Merrick case at um, 6B, there's an outline of the um, timeline of events. Then if we go forwards, please, to page 19 of this 
um, document. There is, um, on this and over the following pages, um, a detailed explanation of um, the Yetminster case, correctly describing the person involved as um, Tracy Ann Merritt. And again, the inquiry is very familiar with um, Tracy um, Ann Merritt. She was a witness in phase one of our inquiry and gave evidence to us about what happened to her, including how the prosecution of her um, left her suicidal. Can we move um, through this, please? It says that um, the defendant, as she's described, had been employed as a postmistress for over four years. Miss Merritt worked at the Yetminster Post Office, but also operated an outreach post office at Chetmol. Chetmol. An audit was conducted at the Yetminster Post Office on the 29th of September 2011, following concerns raised by a former holiday relief worker at the Yetminster branch in August 2011 over alleged cash shortages. And then Mr Constant and Mr Gilding arrived at the Yetminster Post Office at 8.30 a.m. Um, th that, that is, am I right, a reference to you? Do you it is, yes. Um, you remember um, auditing the yes, branch? I do. I do, yes. In this two-year period, I think it would be, as you've now described it, how many audits um, did you conduct? Um, I honestly can't remember. It would have been um, uh, in the high... Uh, around, I would say around about 100. But it, it may have been less. So what, one a week, more. then? Uh, yes, yeah, some, sometimes there could be two or three in a week. But, yeah, I would, I would say... 50 to 100, but um, I don't know the exact number. And um, can you recall anything of the detail of this? As I say, we may be coming back to you in, um, uh, later, but yes. for now. So I've, I've read this document, and um, um, yes, I, I recollect that what was stated here was what happened on the day. Um, if we go forwards to um, page um, 22 of the document, please. Um, under um, interview, um, the caution was explained to Miss Merritt. She was interviewed, it said, in accordance with PACE, and she said the following. Uh, she denied having taken the money the night before the audit as she had previously advised the auditors and now produced a large document regarding ongoing litigation by Shoesmith solicitors over the reliability of the Horizon system. Uh, did you conduct the interview? No. Until you um, read this document, did you know that um, in her interview under caution, Ms Merritt said that what she had told uh, you and your colleague um, was... Um, incorrect and was um, in fact blaming the horizon system no I didn't know that how um, what involvement did the auditors have in um, the subsequent investigation of a, um, a sub postmaster for the purposes of prosecution uh, after we'd attended and produced the audit report we had no further involvement that was handled by the contract advisor and the security team. In the course of this audit, um, you would have been applying the attitude of mind that you have described as earlier, namely, systems robust, nothing's yes. wrong with the data, it's down to the sub-postmaster. Yes, and, and as this um, audit report states, um, there was a shortfall in the cash and there was a personal check from the postmaster um, that was in the till um, and when questioned as to why there was a personal check-in um, well it, as it says there she gave us a statement that she'd taken the cash for personal reasons 
uh, you now know that she says that's incorrect and that it was the Horizon system. And in fact, I think you now know that the prosecution against her was discontinued, don't you? Um, I have heard that since, but um, that was not what um, we were told at the time. No. Did you ever think when conducting audits that uh, what we might be, uh, what might be being said to us was um, inaccurate and caused by upset and panic? So part of our remit was once we conducted an audit, if we were to find a discrepancy, like in this case, um, we were to ask the postmaster uh, for an explanation and that would just be noted and um, a signature gained from the <coughs> postmaster to confirm that that was what was discussed. We would not uh, engage in any kind of um, uh, investigation or questioning because that would, could possibly, if uh, endangered any future uh, um, uh, questioning and carried out by the security team. So we, our role was purely to record what was said at the time and to record that and pass that on. Thank you. That document can come down now. Can we go back um, to your witness statement, please? And um, paragraph 25, um, which is on uh, page four of the witness statement. So WITN 0538100, so page four, please. Um, you tell us in the witness statement at paragraph 25, you were never made aware of any bugs or defects with Horizon, correct? Correct, yes. And... Can we therefore look at um, a small number of documents, please? Firstly, um, FUJ 3052407. This is um, a Pinnacle um, 54313. You're aware of what Pinnacles are, aren't you? Um... Could you remind me? <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to give evidence. But no. <laughs> can you recall what a pinnacle was? No. Uh, do you remember a um, um, a system where you could call in to a centralised facility issues or um, problems yes. with the operation of the Horizon system? Yeah, so there was, um, uh, we had a network business support centre, which was a telephone um, helpline, and one of the options um, was if you had issues with Horizon, you could call them. Um, this is um, a record at their end. Ah, oh, right, okay, thank you. Um, of um, such a call. Um, can you see that um, in the top line underneath the title it says opened 19th of uh, September 2000 and the customer is recorded to be you? I can see that, yes. If we go two boxes to the right um, we can see it's um, recorded to be you. And if we go down to the, um, the big box uh, the activities box, uh, we can see that it deals with a call opened, as we saw on the 19th of September 2000, where the caller is having problems balancing. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Um, that the postmaster is trying to balance, and it is saying cannot balance while transfers are in progression. And then if we go down to um, uh, over the page um, to the entry at 7.52, there are lots of entries for 7.52, but the first one, thank you, um, uh, Rakesh Patel says, I applied the outstanding transfers workaround 
and have confirmation from the PM that this was successful. PM has agreed closure of this um, call. Uh, do you remember um, this um, problem, um, a calling in that a postmaster was trying to balance and couldn't balance whilst transfers were in progression and a workaround was applied? Uh, no, I don't remember. Um, I'm not sure why my name is on there um, because the office code um, is that of a Crown office and I was a Crown manager at the time and the person named as the caller on the third line was my assistant manager at the time. Um, so um, I'm from what I've read there, it would appear that he had, was dealing with this and I don't have any recollection of it at all. You say in your statement that um, we needn't turn it up in paragraph 108 when you were shown this uh, document by the inquiry many months ago, uh, that you recalled uh, that um, the sum wouldn't roll over if there were outstanding transfers. Yes, that was part of the... Um, horizon balance process if you were in an office like a crown office where there were multiple stock units if there were outstanding transfers from one stock unit to another i.e um, stock a had transferred an amount out but stock b had not accepted it then the office would the office accounts rollover procedure would not be able to take place because there was an outstanding figure and did you know that you'd have to ring technical support for them to apply a fix, a workaround, to allow that to happen? Uh, no, I didn't, because personally I, I didn't come across that situation. What did you know about that problem then? In uh, what context did you know about it? Uh, this appears to be a record of um, a, a system error with Horizon uh, that, until that um, has a fix applied to it, a workaround applied to it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've no recollection of ever being involved in this um, and until I saw this document that's the first that I'd seen of the workaround. So um, your name is being used in vain in this document? <laughs> well I wouldn't say in vain, it may have been put on there because I was the manager of that particular branch. And would that I have been right, sorry to speak over you, at that time, at September 2000? Um, I, I believe so. I believe so. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which office I was at at the time, but looking at the office code and the name of the other person who was my assistant manager uh, at, at the Southampton branch. So um, around about 2000, I would have been in Southampton branch. Uh, can we look at um, a, a different pinnacle, please? Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think you'll um, be familiar with this because we've given them to you in advance and it's clear from what you've just said that you've poured over them very carefully. Um, uh, FUJ3076367. Can you see that this is um, the 25th of October 2000? Yes. The pinnacle is opened and the customer is recorded as um, uh, you again. Yes? <laughs> yes. Um, are you going to give the same answer as before? This has nothing to do with you? Uh, no, I'm not going to give that answer. Um, however, um, looking at this, um, it's um, a report uh, What what the inquiry made is to do with a supplementary report that was produced as part of the accounting process um, and what was being queried on this occasion is um, why a supplementary report had additional figures on that were different to what was being reported in the account itself um, and um, what was um, eventually um, brought to our attention, so myself and, um, uh, well, yeah, particularly me, was the fact that I was 
incorrectly reading the report that was being produced. So should we go through the, yeah, um, sure. the, the, the pinnacle, please? Um, looking at the, um, the big box at activities, um, third line, um, has reprinted a um, customer's revenue for week 29. Yeah. And counters revenue. Sorry? Counters revenue. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Counters revenue for week 29. And it is showing the week numbers for 29 and 28 mixed as the grand total. Um, can you decode what that's saying, please? <laughs> okay. If this was your message to uh, so the, support. The, 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 the counters revenue um, was a supplementary report that was printed uh, as part of the balance procedure for the office. Um, and um, the counters revenue was where um, items were recorded. So, for instance, um, the, the post office at the time was selling different forms of stationery. And because there wasn't a, um, a product um, code attached on Horizon 2, um, the stationery, that's, that's where the um, sales would appear as part of the counters revenue. So the counters revenue would be a breakdown of those sorts of things. Um, and um, yeah, so that, that figure that would be a repair, appear on the bottom of that report would agree with the corresponding line on the account. Um, and on this occasion, um, the, the two were on the report had been amalgamated or, or appeared to be, have been amalgamated. Now, um, there is lots of, um, uh, this is a long pinnacle, Yeah. Um, this one. And if we just look at some entries, please, look at the third page, please. Um, after it's been allocated um, by a John Kin Simpkins to a Steve Squires um, on the 26th of October, um, it, um, at, if you look on the 25th, sorry, before the allocation, about 10 lines in, um, will pass to SSC. Can you recall what the SSC was? Uh, no. Um, uh, could this be a new CI4 bug? Were you aware of um, that uh, bug? No. Was this ever discussed with you on the telephone? No. Um, and then um, the allocation that I mentioned at the foot of the page, please, allocated two lines from the bottom to Steve Squires to um, investigate. And then over the page, please, to page four. Um, three lines from the bottom. Um, the call record has been transferred to the, um, the EPOS development team. Did you know what EPOS was? Uh, EPOS is electronic points of sale, as far as I'm aware. And um, did you ever, were you ever any, told of any difficulties or problems with the EPOS part of Horizon? No. And so that would fall within that attitude of mind that you had, yes. everything was um, tickety-boo? Yes. Um, can we um, move on, please, um, to page five? Uh, the uh, when the issue is investigated, um, it seems that um, uh, Mr. K had problems tracking um, the issue because of missing messages in the message store. Did you know what the message store was? No. Um, he records, um, I've traced through this problem and by looking at the message store I find that all the stock unit markers are correct. The office reprint markers are correct and the um, WP level seems to be sufficiently high to include the fixes for some known problems in this area. Um, was any of this ever fed back to you? Absolutely not. That there were known problems? No, until I was shown this document as part of the um, bundle, I'd not seen any of this information before. And what did you think when you saw it? Um, <laughs> I didn't understand it, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, however, looking at the audit logs, I cannot find any evidence of the counter's revenue reprint being printed. I tried to build a message store from the attached file and failed uh, due to missing correspondence server messages. Do you know what any of that means? No. And if you'd been told at the time, it would have been gobbledygook to it you would then? would have been, yes. Yeah. Uh, can we go to page six, please? Um, four lines in, um, it seems that Mr Squires called your branch. Uh, you weren't available. Um, Mr Kemp, your assistant, said he would do a reprint to see if the problem still <coughs> occurs. However, as the office is very busy, this is unlikely to be before two o'clock. Right. Um, and then over to page seven. I'm not going through every line here, you'll appreciate it, just <laughs> lo looking um, at the sort of the key points as the issue develops. On um, page seven, there are um, a number of entries about evidence deletion. Can you see that? I can see that, yes. Now, in due course, we, we may have to... Um, inquire of Mr Squires about who it was who made those entries and what they mean, why evidence was being deleted from the uh, message store um, or whether um, any other evidence was um, uh, uh, deleted. But um, if we look forwards please to the 8th of um, December at the foot of the page, um, I, I, I don't know at the moment exactly what this means, where a deleted, so a previous user appears to have been deleted, but there's a record that um, I think Mr. Um, Kaiser is making these entries, albeit in February 2002 or February the 2nd. Uh, in any event, the text is, um, um, I've looked at the new attachments. Um, they're not what Steve K asked. If we go over the page, please. Uh, four on the 20th of November, in order to recreate the problems we need. And then there's a list of things um, that are needed, a full message store i.e. every single record from every counter and correspondence server, the audit logs from the counters on which the reports were produced and the date on which they were um, uh, printed. And then he records, or someone records, from what I could see within the message store that would supply the problem with redeemed stamps report. It could just be a case of user misunderstanding. This report encounters revenue or office weekly reports that are not cut off. So if the user prints them, then carries out further transactions between that time and the point of office rollover. Any reprint produced in future um, uh, cash accounting period will be different from the um, originals. And then if we go forwards to the 11th of December, um, which is um, on page at nine, we can see at the foot of the page that the full logs are added. And on the 15th December, which is on page 10, um, it's recorded um, at 1707.21, problem diagnose, and a code data fix has been applied. Were you um, informed of that? No. That they had applied a, um, a, a data fix? No. At the, uh, at the other end? No, and I have no idea what that is. Were you told anything to the effect that, look, there's a problem with the Horizon system, we've um, uh, changed some code, or we've applied a data fix in order to mend it? No. So what were you told? Um, I honestly can't remember. 
I'm, I'm not I'm not aware of. Um, we looked at a, um, a statement just now that said that the report, um, if not cut off from the previous cash account, could duplicate the figures, and um, I believe that's what we were told. But I can't say for definite. That's what we were told that this was the early days of Horizon System and that we had not followed the right process and that we hadn't cut off this particular report at the end of the cash account period, hence why the duplication of the following months and the previous months on this one report. So in your mind, this was another case of the you, hori horizon being robust, reliable and perfect, <laughs> but in fact the user error, i.e. you in your office, yes. getting it wrong. Yes, but you, I was never made aware of anything else that's on this. On this. Thank you. So um, we're at quarter past 11. Um, might that be an appropriate moment to take the morning break? I was just unmooting myself. Yes, by all means. <laughs> uh, uh, what time shall we start again? Uh, I'd say half past, please, sir. Fine, thank you. So, good morning. Can you uh, see and hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gilding, can we look at a third pinnacle, please? Um, <coughs> FUJ3077691. Uh, can you say that, uh, see that this one is dated the 3rd of... Um, October 2000 as having been opened mm -hmm. um, and the customer is uh, recorded as being you again. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've had the opportunity to look over this pinnacle as well. Yes. Uh, you'll see the entry under activities, um, third line in critical event, error in repost, um, API call access is denied, no kel for this particular NT error. Can you recall calling a um, helpline or similar in relation to this? No. Have you had the opportunity to, um, to read the um, pinnacle? I have, yes. And can you recall what was reported back to you? Um, I have no recollection of this at all. I mean, I, I'm not going to go through it all, not no. least because um, in the interest of time and it's quite a long record, but mm -hmm. um, it, the long and the short of it was a decision was taken in the course of the um, investigation of the bug that not, uh, that the root cause of the bug needn't be investigated and that the bug uh, needn't be um, fixed. But you can't remember what was reported back to you. I have no recollection of this event at all. Um, the fact that the uh, case is opened at 3.43 in the morning, I certainly wouldn't have been in the office at that time. No. <laughs> so why my name is attached to that, I have no idea. Can you recall any communication over this issue? No, nothing at all. You've um, informed us, that can be taken down, thank you, um, that um, you had what I've described as an attitude of mind, a state of belief, on the basis of what a, another poll employee said to you in the course of your training yes. on Horizon, that they said, Fujitsu had said. Mm -hmm. When you were carrying out training, did you um, pass that on? No. And why not? Um, because it was um, something that had been um, said as part of the training, and and the reason the uh, the reason it was explained in the initial training um, to us that it was the second best um, second most secure, I think was so, the so yeah um, phrase you used because um, as employees of post office we were 
skeptical because it was new technology. Everything had always been paper-based, so we had a lot of people a, who were having to deal with technology for the first time. And um, there were concerns about, obviously, using a computer system that a lot of people hadn't used. And so this statement, I believe, was made to reassure people because the payment of pensions and, and uh, allowances were taking place at post offices at the time, um, I believe that the statement was made to reassure us that the, the system was secure as regards people's information for pensions. Um, but, but apart from, but when I did any additional training, I, I would not have used that um, statement. And it just help us, it, you said that you think it was given as reassurance to you. To Why didn't you pass on the reassurance when you were training? Uh, I may have done. I can't honestly say I didn't. I may have done. Um, but it was not something that was part of any um, script or uh, training um, plan that was given. But what you didn't do in the course of training was to say that in the nine years by then that I've been using... Um, horizon I have been <laughs> informed of a series of errors bugs and defects no, in it because you hadn't no because I hadn't no. nobody was telling you about things that were known by the post office and Fujitsu about problems in the system absolutely and therefore you weren't training people yes, the no, worst I, I, was, I was training people on on the knowledge that I was given and that was that, that it was a secure system there was no uh, indication of any bugs or defects at any stage whilst I worked uh, for the post office and you explained to us the basis on which you came to that conclusion um, earlier it was in part on what you were told and in part because you never had cause to investigate the data that the system itself was producing yes you assumed it was accurate yes In terms, um, speaking generally to start with, um, turning to, to training, would it be right to say that there were two types of training that were um, given? One was um, training to new employees, sort of mm -hmm. entrance to the post office estate for the mm -hmm. first time, um, and then, so new joiners. Yes. And then secondly, um, training about Horizon to existing employees. Uh, so, so what, what sort of time scale are you thinking Right about? from the beginning. So when, when Horizon was being rolled out, they were right. the, the, the two types of training that were going on. Yeah, so when, when Horizon was rolled out, I was part of the Crown Office Network. I was yes. not in the training team. No. So um, from, from my personal introduction to Horizon, I, as a Crown Manager, attended a two-day course um, but what training took place for Horizon at the sub no, office network, I, I don't know because I wasn't part of the You weren't part of it. And so when it came to 2009 and you started to um, deliver training, were you trained as a trainer? Uh, I think your witness statement says no. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, I was, um, because I had previously been a trainer, um, when I was on the reserve instructor trainings. Um, so I had experience of delivering classroom training. Um, and because of my um, years of experience as a branch manager and using the Horizon system there, um, it was decided that that was a fit for the role, so no additional training was required. And were you training um, new recruits? Uh, not directly. Then you mean new joiners to the post office? Yes. Uh, not on a regular basis. Um, that was the role of my team. I was um, leading You were supervising them? Supervising the team, basically. But the there were odd days where I would stand in if uh, one of my team was unwell and we just couldn't arrange cover. So I might step in to d deliver that day or morning's training until a relief could be arranged. 
but that would be the only times that I did any classroom training. But the function of the team that you managed was to train new joiners? Primarily new joiners, yes. And primarily who Sorry, were the... Yes, it was, it was new joiners, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you tell us in your witness statement, it's paragraph 10, that um, maybe if we just turn that up, please. Um, WITN 0538 0100. Um, at page 2, paragraph 10. You tell us in that paragraph that when you were training back in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. uh, when you were delivering the induction course, that's for new joiners. Yes. This was pre-IT and it was a six-week classroom course. Indeed, yes. And then I think if we go to paragraph 58, please. Um, which is on page nine. It says, following the introduction of Horizon and the reduction of emphasis on numeracy skills required to balance the branch the training was reduced to four weeks yes yes and then in paragraph 59 you tell us that this was reduced further to two weeks as the product range tra changed drastically yes yes so the, the scheme was six weeks training before horizon then four weeks then two weeks yes and it, just going back to paragraph 58 there you say that following the introduction of Horizon and the reduction on <coughs> emphasis of numeracy skills, what do you mean that by that, the reduction on emphasis of numeracy, numeracy skills? Uh, because um, pre-Horizon, um, the staff who were working for the post office had to have a high level of numeracy because um, everything was done with... Um, <laughs> pencil and rubber basically and and you had um uh ledgers ledgers yes basically um however when horizon w came in um <coughs> the reports were automatically generated f based on the inputs to the system um so a lot of the um calculations were done by the system rather than the person having to uh, be able to have mental arithmetic and, and add up columns and so did that account from the drop from six weeks to four weeks? Uh, the, the drop from six to four was um, primarily around um, the change, and, and the same with when we went from four to two. It was all to do with the change of the product range that was being trained. Um, so um, as the number of product, products being trained <coughs> was reduced, so the, the amount of time required in the classroom was reduced. The training in the classroom was very much based around uh, the products and um, introducing new entrants to the products and their understanding of, and then the actual um, use of Horizon in the classroom would be through practice sessions of how to sell those products and then how it was for accounting for. And were the Horizon terminals in the classroom? Yes, there were. And. What could you facilitate or, or demonstrate rolling over the accounts in no. the classroom? No. no why, why, why couldn't you roll over in the classroom? Uh, because the information from the, um, the um, software allocated to the classroom, um, they were given a specific type of branch code which identified them as a training unit. Um, so that was to ensure that any transactions put through a classroom terminal did not go into the live server. Um, now, because it was a training unit, um, it wouldn't, the system wouldn't allow the branch to be rolled over. So at the start of each training course, um, the trainer would go in before the course started and reset all the terminals to a certain starting position with amounts of cash and stock. And then when the balance procedure was 
shown. We could go as far as producing the reports and checking the stock against the printouts, um, but we couldn't then progress to roll over to the next accounting or, or trading period. So, so the people being trained were being trained on equipment that didn't enable them to be trained about progressing from one accounting period to the next? That's correct. That would Wasn't that training that a, um, so uh, that training sorry that that would have been covered with the on-site training. So after the attending the classroom, uh, the sub postmasters had a trainer with them for the first two weeks of go live, and so that was part of the online to show how that was finalised. Wasn't that a um, a flaw in the training being offered? It was, but there was because of the restrictions on the terminals there was there was nothing that we could do um, to actually demonstrate that we we had handouts that explained how the process worked but we couldn't physically walk them through it did anyone ever raise this can't we create a, a training environment which doesn't uh, connect to the live estate and we can roll over from one week to the next because it's something that these sub postmasters yeah. are going to be Yes, doing and, every and week week yeah. on a weekly basis yeah. for the rest of their working lives yes and and the question was asked, um, and I don't know who by, but generally by the, our team and, and us as, as team leaders, and um, we were just told no, the technology wasn't available. So the computer says no answer. Basically. <laughs> yeah, sort of thing, yes. Did you view that at uh, the time as a, um, a significant flaw, that there was a disconnect between how people were being trained in the classroom? as opposed to uh, the situation that they would experience um, lifetime in, the, uh, in, in their offices? Not as, not as a direct flaw, because the, what we would show them in the classroom <coughs> would take them right up until the closing of that account. The only thing they wouldn't see was how those figures were taken forward as the, so the final figures on that account would appear as the starting figures on the next account. That's the only thing they wouldn't see. If we just go back to paragraphs 18 and 19 mm -hmm. of your witness statement, please, which is uh, on page 3. We're um, dealing with a different type of training here, which is when Horizon was first introduced right. into the Crown network. Mm -hmm. You say all staff attended a one-day face-to-face training event, which had a very hands-on syllabus. All staff were um, trained on how to access the Horizon system, how to enter transactions via the customer-facing screens, and how to balance an individual stock unit at the end of the balancing period. This including rolling the stock unit into the next balance period. How was it that that was able to be trained um, ten years earlier? Right. So, so what, ten years later, it yeah. Wasn't. So, um, what I'm saying there is, we were um, shown how to use the equipment. Um, the rolling over to the next bit was not done on the terminals. Again, that was done via a handout. A handout, okay. Yeah. So the, the similar limitation yes, absolutely. Um, applied. Yes. When you um, were managing the team, um, was feedback ever given by your um, team members um, as a result of the training that they um, delivered? that um, two T's were finding difficulty with balancing? Uh, so each um, training event, there was feedback collated. Um, however, that was sent through, um, that was collated uh, and sent to an external company who would um, provide the, the summary of that feedback to the uh, senior managers. Who was the external company? Oh, I can't remember. Okay. I can't remember. Um, for some reason, I have a, a thing that they were they were based in Totten in Southampton, but I couldn't tell you their name. Um, so they were responsible of what, receiving feedback from. So we had feedback forms that we would give to the delegates. Mm -hmm. um, they would be placed in a prepaid envelope, sent to this company. Um, they would then. Um, create the data from the feedback and send that to our network business, uh, to the national training team up in Salford. 
Did you ever get to see that? Uh, the only uh, part of that I ever got to saw was if there were specific comments about made about individual members of my team. What, and they were extracted? Yes, yes. And why was that? Why? Um... That, that was felt to be part of um, uh, a training tool for uh, the individuals, uh, any learning points that came out from feedback from delegates about the individuals. But what about the substance of what they were saying rather than the identity of the trainer? So, so th that was being fed into the national training managers who were making decisions about how the training was run and um, what training would be delivered and how it would be developed. So as in my role as managing the team, um, for the majority of the time I had no involvement in that uh, uh, side of things. Um, there was, after a later, uh, another reorganisation um, where part of that responsibility came down to us as field team leaders, where we were asked to input into um, different training reviews. Um, but again, we were only asked for our comments. We didn't actually action those reviews. Um, can we look at that? Yes, um, indeed. Please? Yeah. I think you're referring to poll four zeros um, five eight five zero. Oh. we can see at the bottom left um, a training uh, for quarter three uh, review of December 2011 is this um, a record of the exercise that you had just mentioned yes it is yeah and it, you'll see the way that the document works. Um, the individual um, who is providing the feedback referred to as a stakeholder. So they, they, these individuals, are they field team leaders yes. across, the, across the country? Yeah. And they presumably have pulled this from... From their teams. From their teams, yeah. yes. So, so the individual who's providing the feedback, who's described as the, as a, as the stakeholder... Um, sets out a, a requested change and then the response to that is given in the um, far right hand column yes and if we go forward to page five please i think we can see um yours mm -hmm. and just to understand um what um you're saying in this document a number of the uh, columns say lose and some say change. When you'll say lose and then there's a number, what's the number referring to? So, uh, so for instance, lose 46 cash management. Is, yeah. that, is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Well, 46, yeah. 46 was the session number within the training event. So each, each of the um, different... Um, Module, products, modules? Products, modules, yeah. They're all given session numbers. And you're suggesting to um, um, nationally that uh, module 46 should be removed uh, because, and then you give the reason. Yes. Yep. And I just want to ask you about an entry um, halfway down the page, starting stock balancing. Um, and it reads, stock balancing is only two slides, and that is... Um, um, talking about cash management, which has already been covered in an hour's session. It needs to have more reference to all aspects of balance, uh, balancing. For example, TP, um, by that you mean transaction processing? Uh, trading period. Trading periods and balancing periods. Yes. Um, net discrepancies, settling centrally, transaction corrections and um, uh, REMs. Remittances. Yeah. Yeah. We know what reming Sorry. in and out is. <laughs> it's all right. Um, can you um, uh, tell us on what basis were you making that suggestion? Um, so um, that was. So the actual stock balancing session was very much a practical session, and these two slides were um, at the start of the session were an introduction to 
what the delegates were about to do and how they should um, how they should complete the balance in the training environment. Um, but uh, as I've said uh, with the outcome, there was um, very little explanation around terminology and the accounting procedures for losses and gains. Um, and um, it was important that once they left the classroom, that the, um, uh, the delegates were aware of how they correctly accounted for losses and gains and what the correct procedures were. Why is it important to be able to account for a gain or a loss? Uh, because if you don't account for it correctly, it would impact on your accounts for the following. So you would have false starting figures for your next accounting period. And what might happen to you? <laughs> you might get an audit. <laughs> you might get? You might get an audit. Annoyed? A an audit. Sorry. Oh, an audit. <laughs> you might get a visit from the audit team, yeah. yeah. And what might happen then? Um, that would depend on the outcome of that particular audit. You might get sacked? Um, not necessarily. You might get prosecuted? Not necessarily. It's been known to happen, hasn't it? It has been known to happen, but that's, that's not the primary role of the audit. You said that the primary role of the audit was actually to help people? Yes, to identify discrepancies and how they may have occurred. And is that how your team saw it, the auditors that went in, that we're there to help people, <coughs> not to act as um, uh, investigators, to, Absolutely, par that, to pass we, on no, information to no, investigations division? No, our, our role was purely to go in and identify the situation in the branch to assist in any way we could and then pass that relevant information on to the contracts advisors and the security team. You um, are recording this in December 2011, so 10 or 11 years after the introduction of Horizon, you're making the point that the training on balancing is inadequate. Um, needs to be changed. Need, yes, needs to be. But we, uh, there were training reviews on a, on a regular basis as far as I'm aware. We've heard some evidence that um, feedback that was provided um, before rollout suggested that training on um, balancing was inadequate. Mm -hmm. We've heard evidence that, uh, that the feedback provided during rollout a decade earlier was that the training on balancing was inadequate. And here you are 11 years later saying there are... Um, <coughs> problems with the training on balancing, aren't you? Yes. With the with the um, yes, with the training in the classroom. And the entry in the row below, add more information regarding how a branch works uh, differently. I think that must mean between office and stock unit TPs and BPs. How. Arise in accounts for transactions. Do you know how it was that, um, which is essentially the same point as above, isn't it? Yeah, this is more around explaining um, what all the different terminologies are. And there wasn't, there wasn't, in my view, an, enough emphasis on what the different terminology was used, so people could get. Um, yeah, they, they might get confused as to the difference between a trading period and a balance period. So it was to make uh, a lot clearer what those, what the differences were. And, and these problems with the training on balancing, were they raised, were you raising this on the basis of what had been said directly to you by recruits or by what your team members had fed back to you. So this was feedback from the team members. And was it fairly consistent across the board? Yes. So not an isolated no. issue? No. Isolated issues wouldn't have, um, would have been uh, dealt with on, a, on an individual basis. Um, items that were put forward as part of the training review were uh, a wider view. 
Um, can we look, please, at pole four zeros, um, five eight six nine, please? This seems to be part of the same process. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see the date in the bottom left. Right. Um, and if we turn to page 17 of the document, please. We can see a record of um, feedback from your team. Can you see that? Yes. And is the, um, are the entries in the right-hand um, column from two Ts, from recruits? No, these are from um, trainers who are running the courses. Okay, so th this is pooling um, the actual words yes. of trainers in a document, so rather than you speaking for them, yes. they're speaking to head office. Yeah, so, um, so them, they're, themselves. They're, they're giving me their um, feedback or thoughts on, um, on these sessions, and then I'm collating that and passing that to the review. And um, somebody says in the, um, the second entry for your team, um, in the second paragraph, my initial thought is what has changed. I've already expressed the opinion that we might have missed the boat as far as making changes to the course and still hope this isn't seen as being negative and unconstructed. It seems to me all we have done is to take the old sessions, update them a little but no longer call them module one, two or three. I was very aware that this course is still a one size fits all type of course, which is aimed more towards the Crown Office branches. All of this might of course be changed with the network changes. Even so, um, SPMR or main post office branches are not the same as counter assistance in a Crown Office. My feeling is there should be a course written completely from scratch that seems specifically that someone have to run a branch by themselves after a couple of weeks or so. As for instance, we. Uh, could cover REMS more fully. Mm -hmm. What's your What's the essence of the complaint there? Uh, the essence of the complaint is that it is um, the package. The training package was a one size fits all. Um, that the um, the the style of training was aimed primarily um, around the products, um, and that. Um, Yeah, the, the, the one size fits all uh, didn't necessarily fit. You said in the course of that answer, um, the course had been aimed too much at the products or focused too much on the products. Can we just look at what you say in your witness statement, please? Right. Um, WITN 0538-0100. At page 17... in paragraph 102 at the top of the page. Is this what you were just referring to there? I felt the emphasis of the course and the business as a whole had become too sales orientated and not enough focus was on cash discrepancies within branches. Right, so what I'm referring to there, uh, as stated in the previous paragraph 101, this is around 2012 when post office um, as a, as a business um, changed the way that they were operating and that they were uh, going very much for a sales driven culture rather um, uh, so the, the, the changes to the training then were very much around um, here's the product here's how we sell it and then how do you now add on additional sales to that product um, it wasn't something that sat comfortably with me. It's not what I do. I'm not a salesman. Um, and whilst that was the direction the business was going, um, personally, um, it, was, it is just my view. It's not the business's view, but my view was that there was too much time spent on trying to increase sales rather than um, paying attention to the accounting and, and accuracy 
within the branch. And you say in this paragraph that there was not enough focus on cash discrepancies within branch. Why did there need to be focus or more focus on cash discrepancies? Um, so that when uh, discrepancies occurred in the branch, the sub postmaster would um, have a greater knowledge of how to investigate and um, also you know, um, have a full understanding of what support options were available for them as well. You say at the end of that paragraph, I stress that um, this is my view mm -hmm. and not that of senior management team who are striving to keep branches afloat by generating new income streams. Yes. And did that, um, does that reflect what you were told back at the time? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and is it right that on the, um, on the course um, that it, your colleague referred to in the document that we just looked at, um, balancing and cash account issues were handled on day two of the course? Uh, if, I can't remember the agenda of the course, but that, if that's what they say, then... If you, if you can't remember... I'm, I, no, I, I, I can't remember the exact agenda of the course. Can you recall at any time um, until you went over to the Horizon um, Mediation Investigation Team that anyone within post office suggested to you that any of the problems that sub-postmasters um, uh, and um, other branch staff might face were due to any issue with Horizon at all? No. Thank you very much. They're the only questions I ask um, at the moment. I think... There are um, some other questions. Yes, um, Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Gilding, um, good afternoon. Um, I ask questions on behalf of 156 sub postmasters, assistants, and managers who are represented in this inquiry by okay. Howe and Co. And um, I want to ask you about some points in your statement that you make about horizon training and sub-postmaster user errors. And um, I'm going to take you to three paragraphs in your statement. The first paragraph is paragraph 43, and the reference for that, I see we're already on the screen, is that that's page 7 of 19. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not... Sir, can you hear me a bit better now? I can hear you clearly, or more clearly, um, <laughs> that last... Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. I think yeah. the microphone was too far away. Um, at paragraph 46, 43, sorry, you say, informal and formal feedback was given at each event um, to the trainer. Um, are you able to say whether you received any feedback or whether feedback was given after the event, after training had completed or concluded? Uh, so the um, feedback I'm referring to there is from the paragraph above, mm. where, which states that part of my role was to attend training events, whether that be classroom or uh, on-site. Um, and as a result of what I observed and as part of a training and development for the individuals, I would give informal and formal feedback to that trainer based on my you observations. Would feedback, right. Yeah, but that um, was purely for on the observations conducted. What about feedback given by the sub postmaster to the trainer or the training team? As part of the the on site um, visits that I would conduct with the, with the trainers, um, I would have a discussion with the sub postmaster and ask them for um, feedback about their training and about the uh, <coughs> trainer. More, in, I, was, I was more focused on the actual trainer themselves, but obviously if they gave me information uh, about the training as well, then that was recorded as well. So essentially you were training the trainer? Yes. Um, were you aware of any feedback or complaints about the training that came from sub-postmasters after the training had taken place? No. Um, 
why wasn't that fed back to you? Are, are, are you able to say? Um, no, I'm not able to say. Did you listen to the evidence of the uh, sub-postmasters um, who gave evidence in phase two of this inquiry? Um, for phase one, I ought to say, from um, February to May 2022. No, I've not seen any of that. Many, uh, then you won't have seen, and, and I have to put this to you, many of our clients, and 50 of them gave evidence and the rest um, were read into the record, um, many, uh, and their statements have been um, exhibited, mm -hmm. many of our clients uh, say they received no training whatsoever in balancing in relation to discrepancies. Many others requested further training but those requests were refused. Were you aware of those issues at the time when no. you were involved? Um, we've looked at 102 of our clients' witness statements, and 95 of these, um, that's 93% of our clients, all say that the training they received was inadequate. Um, why weren't you aware that there were these very serious issues coming from um, sub-postmasters in respect of Horizon training? Um, because uh, um, it was not part of my role. Uh, my role was to train the trainers, uh, not to develop the training course itself. That was down to the senior managers to... Um, to develop the training courses based on the feedback from postmasters. And what about feedback from those trainers <coughs> who you trained? Mm -hmm. um, 19 of our clients have said in their evidence that shortfalls occurred actually during the training process itself, for which those who were conducting the training were unable to provide explanations. Did you ever hear from those who you trained about those issues are rising. No, and that's the first time I've heard that statement. Right. But yeah, um, uh, it's, it's um, um, one example, perhaps, I ought to put to you. Um, Heather Early, um, who was a sub-postmistress from 2011 to 2017, said that she never completed a balance during training. She wasn't trained in respect of how to deal with shortfalls. And the post office trainer um, who trained her could not make the horizon system balance. Um, that's one example of, of the 19. Are, are, are you not aware of that? I'm not aware of that, and, and I don't know who that is, or, no. or and, and may well have been in a different part of the country that it didn't come a, under my team's remit. I'm sure she wasn't trained by you, but so. <laughs> it's an example of someone who was being trained at the time yeah. when you were um, involved in training the trainers. Okay. Um, um, do you say in your... Um, statement then, going back to paragraph 43, mm -hmm. that um, you cannot recall um, any trainer failing in the delivery of the training. They were dedicated, hardworking, regularly went over and above their remit, um, made themselves available for phone calls after training had concluded and forged strong commitments with sub-postmasters. In light of the evidence that hasn't been contested, um, that um, our clients and other sub-postmasters gave in the first phase of this inquiry in relation to um, the, the inadequacy of training. Do you accept, um, with hindsight, um, that trainers must have failed in the delivery of training in respect of the Horizon system? Um, I, I can only answer, as it says in my statement there, um, from the team that I was leading. Um, and I was, um, uh, they, I was satisfied that the, the training they were given, that they were delivering, was to the standard that was required. Um, and um, I can only answer for my own team. I don't know the rest of the country. Well, that was your experience, as you that say. That was my experience. Um, yes. But it, this morning, when you gave, um, in, in answering questions from Mr. Beer, King's Council. Um, in relation to robustness and bugs and defects, you made a concession. You said at the time I thought it was robust, but that's not what I know now. Are you able to say that in relation to training, to make the same concession? Uh, yes, I could make that same concession. Um, but the, the comment I made about being aware now, um, that 
that awareness has only come after I've left the business back in 2016. Thank you. If we could then turn to the next paragraph I wanted to refer you to, which is paragraph 79 of your statement, which is on page 12 of 19. And um, you say here, I believe, in the present tense, the training programme was adequate. <coughs> the vast majority of trainees were competent in the use of Horizon, able to complete all tasks required for their respective role within the branch. Um, in light of what you've just said, that you can make that concession, should I believe, now read, I believed in the past Indeed. tense? Indeed, yes. yes. Um, in relation to your evidence this morning, a, a, a follow-on question. Um, you said um, that you were told by a post office trainer that Horizon was the second most secure system in Europe. Do you recall the name of the person who told you this? No. <clears throat> the problems that I've referred to, which the inquiry has heard about in phase one of um, the... Um, um, of the evidence and, and, and the hearings from February to May. Um, they were problems that you said you weren't aware of. Um, do you think there is a reason why you didn't know about these? Sorry, I'm, with, I'm not These sure what... issues with training that had been arising from the Horizon rollout. Is there a reason why I was not aware of them? Were there meetings of other trainers, issues um, that were discussed in relation to have we heard any complaints? What's the situation on the ground with these sub-postmasters? No. Were there discussions? No. And do you think it would have been helpful to you if someone within the post office had, had communicated these issues to you? Oh, absolutely, yes. Finally... Um, if we can go to paragraph 91 of your statement, um, and that's at page 14 of 19, for the benefit of the screen. Um, you say here, the only difficulties I encountered with Horizon were primarily due to user errors, mm -hmm. i.e. incorrect accounting processes followed, and quite often a reluctance from sub-postmasters to seek assistance. Unfortunately, there were too many occasions where the sub-postmaster tried to fix discrepancies, but actually by incorrect accounting made the situation worse. However, I'm unable to offer any specific examples at this time. Now, we know, and you've, you've uh, acknowledged to, to Mr. Beer this morning that your understanding of the robustness of the system um, then is not what your understanding is now because of what happened in the group litigation and because of the reasons that we're here for this inquiry. Mm -hmm. Are you able then to make the same concession in relation to um, the errors in the Horizon system uh, being down to user error when in fact our clients say that that's what the post office said but there was actually bugs, errors and defects in the system. Yeah, so, so my statement there is, is based on um, my knowledge as, as somebody who worked for the post office um, and um, Obviously, since I left the post office, other things have come to light that I was not aware of at the time. Um, so my statement is based on my knowledge and experience from working for the post office. But what you know now is different. It's, it's different, yes, indeed. Now, um, you also um, uh, um, confirmed with Mr. Beer that you had what Mr. Beer has described as an attitude of mind or a state of belief in relation to that the, the system was robust and errors were down to, to user error by sub postmasters. Now, the High Court um, found um, that this was the prevalent attitude in the post office. The system was robust. It was the, post, the postmaster's errors that were causing these mm -hmm. problems. From what you can remember and recollect at the time when you were with the um, post office, when these issues with Horizon were arising, did your colleagues share these views, this attitude of mind about the, res um, the robustness of the system and the culpability of sub-postmasters? Was this widespread? This yes, period? it was. And, and when I worked for the mediation team, um, uh, the... 
um, it was uh, we were looking at the data from the horizon equipment um, that would have been a pointless exercise if we'd have known that that information was corrupt um, I don't have any further questions but I expect I might have some questions that I, I'm going to be asked to ask you by Mr Enright Anyone else? Uh, I, I, I apologise. I do have one further question that uh, arises on instructions, sir. All right, carry on, Mr. Jacobs. Um, paragraph 91. Um, you say um, and that you are unable to offer any specific examples of incidences when um, sub-postmasters try to fix discrepancies. Um, are, are there any cases or examples that you can remember that are relevant to your evidence? of problems that sub-postmasters had or experienced that you were aware of? No, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to explain there is there were situations where um, sub-postmasters had identified a shortfall and rather than seeking assistance from the Network Business Support Centre um, or requesting a field team advisor to go out and, and assist them, they were trying to correct things on horizon and uh, on several occasions I witnessed they, they got themselves totally confused as to which way the accounts were, what was negatives, what was positives and actually the, the rather than correcting the uh, discrepancy they were adding to it. So um, that's what I'm, I'm trying to explain there. And just um, one final point. Yes. This state of confusion that people um, were in, might that have been as a result of the training? that, that uh, It might be a lack of knowledge, yes. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Um, just one question, please, from me, or rather one area of questioning. Uh, it's Flora Page on behalf of a number of the sub-postmasters. And... Um, what I want to ask you about is, is how you came to give evidence before the inquiry. Um, who, who approached you in the first instance? Or did you volunteer yourself? Uh, no, I was approached by the inquiry um, via email to provide a witness statement. In your, in your personal email? In my personal email, yes. And do you know how that email was provided to the inquiry? No. Would it have been left with the post office when you finished your period of term with them? I don't know. I don't know. When you left in 2016, it was on f terms which were agreed, was it? It wasn't a dispute between you and the post office? No, it was a voluntary redundancy agreement. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. We have one question on behalf of the Hodgewell CPs. Thank you. Um, Mr Gilding, my name's Angela Patrick, and together with Tim Maloney, KC, we represent a number of sub-postmasters who are wrongly convicted and who are now represented by Hodgewell's solicitors. Um, I have a number of questions about two documents. Um, right. Um, shouldn't take very long. Okay. So we're going to start with a document which goes by the reference Paul <coughs> three zeros three three four eight six. If that could be brought up, I'd be grateful. And I think you can see that it's a it's a typed up document, and on the left hand side it says, "Do I need a cash remittance?" Um, Beyond that title, I'm just going to ask you to look at the very bottom left-hand corner there. Mm -hmm. Can you see version 4.3, yes. August 2011, Chris Gilding? Mm -hmm. Would this be a document that would have been drafted by you? So this document was uh, not written by me, um, but within the uh, field team, I was. Uh, <coughs> it was one of the documents I was responsible for in update, making any updates. So the reason it's 4.3 is in August 2011, I must have made some sort of update, but what that was, I can't recall. You can't recall. 
great. Um, we don't need to go through it, but you, I'm sure you'll take it as ready. You can see what's on the, the page in front of you. Yes. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to, and Mr. Beers already said we're already familiar with the terms, how to rem in and rem out. Is right. that fair? Yes. Thank you. Um, now I want to look at another document to look at information that was available to Fujitsu at this time when this document was being overseen, approved by you. Mm -hmm. um, and can we look at what is the technical appendix to one of the horizon judgments? I don't expect you to have seen this before. I'm using it for shorthand. Right. Uh, and the reference is RLIT 606. And is that in front of you now? It is, yes. Uh, and the front page, I'm only bringing it up so that everybody can see, the front page shows that the judgment was in 2019. So this is after your document was produced. But we're, as I say, only using it for reference to the documents that are in the judgment. No reason you would have necessarily seen this. But I think you've said you're aware the judgments themselves had identified a number of bugs, errors and defects in Horizon. Um, you're nodding, Mr. Gilder. Sorry, yes. You have to say yes or no yes. <laughs> for the uh, transcribers. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and did you know that a number of those were related to reming in and reming out? No, I don't know any of the details of the, the judgments. Um, so if we can, I, can I just add that that uh, document that you previously showed me, the reming in and reming out, was a document that was used for new entrant training, so it would only have been used with people coming into the post office from 2011. So who were new? Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't have been circulated to anybody Not, else? No, it was purely for the training team. So anybody else would have to refer back to their earlier training if they to had the, a problem? To, and, and they would have operations manuals in the branches that explained how the, um, how the processes work. Uh, we'll come back to the document itself, but if we can look at a part of the judgment and everybody will be assured I'm not going to look at every bug. I just want to look at one example. If we can look at page 46, please, and go to the bottom of the page, uh, and I only really want to look at the title here, you can see there at five, the judgment, the judge is referring to a reming in bug. Can you see that, Mr Gilding? Yes. Uh, and just above paragraph 181. I don't need to um, go any further than to read the start, which says this is a Horizon Online bug. And then the judge starts to look at the evidence. I want to look at a particular example for some, a, a particular paragraph for some of the detail. So if we could go to um, page, uh, I'm going to 187, which I think is on page 49. Uh, I apologize to those um, dealing with the documents, page 48 and it's at the bottom. And you can see some Q&As there, the, the judge is considering some of the live evidence that was given. Uh, and at um, paragraph 187, he goes on to say, this evidence does not support the submission that reming errors are picked up by Horizon. It is necessary, therefore, to look at the actual peaks. Now, you've looked at a pinnacle, and you couldn't remember it. A peak is like a pinnacle. It's an right. internal document. Okay to see what they show, the one associated with what the post office called issue one, PC0203085, is dated 22nd August 2010, and is headed pouch remmed in on two counters at the same time. The first entry under impact statement is, and it explains here, the same pouch can be rammed into the system more than once, resulting in a shortage at the branch, which Paul have to rectify by issuing a transaction correction. And if we can scroll down to the next page, please. And the, the judge has looked at other evidence, and he says, in my judgment, in the next paragraph, that entry alone is evidence of a bug. It shows a pouch can be rammed in more than once, admittedly rarely, and that a TC, I think we can agree it's transaction correction, is necessary to correct this. 
uh, and we don't need to go through all the detail, but if we can scroll down a little more. Um, but while we're at that paragraph and that judge's conclusion, had you ever been told that Fujitsu were aware that a bug, error or defect existed? No. Which could show a pouch rammed in more than once? No, never been told that. Thank you. And actually, if we can stay at paragraph 188, you can see that in front of you. <coughs> There's an entry there from a peak from Anne Chambers, which is recorded on the 17th of August. And she, she has some details about a pouch. And below the numbers, it says, the postmaster cannot reverse the transaction since REM reversal isn't allowed. Can you see that, Mr Gilding? Yes. And below... This is not another example of the duplicate REM problem that we have seen in the past, where the use of the PREV key accepted the same pouch twice. In this case, the pouch was processed on both <coughs> counters. Now, that seems to say, suggest that there were at least two problems that Fujitsu were aware of, doesn't it? It does, yes. That appeared similar. Can you help us first? What's a PREV key? Uh, that's the previous key, so it, it would take you back to the previous screen. Thank you. So it's not that problem that relates to the PREV key that the current problem relates to. But were you told about any bugs, errors or defects which could impact on remittances? No. Or on any kind of remming in or remming out? No. Thank you. Can we scroll down to 192, which I think is on the following page, page 50? <coughs> I'm skimming over the evidence. Uh, but it, in that paragraph, which I hope you can see now, in my judgment, this peak is evidence of a bug and a fix which is required to remedy it. It also shows that reming in errors are not always picked up by Horizon. You said you weren't told about any bugs or errors. That's correct. I assume in that sense, you weren't told that sometimes there were reming errors that weren't picked up by Horizon. No, never heard that. As somebody who was involved in training mm -hmm. and auditing, would that have been useful information for you to have had? Oh, of course, it would have been extremely useful. Can we turn back to the first document we looked at? Paul, three zeros, three three four eight six, please. <coughs> and I know you've said this was only new entrance, but let's see what new entrants were being told. And if we can go to page two of this document, please. And you can see on that page some bold text. Can you see that, Mr yes. Gilding? And I'll read it for the transcript. If you have a discrepancy with any of your remittances, please refer to Horizon Online Help Facility or contact the NBSC. Uh, and that's highlighted in bold, isn't it? Yes. Can you recall why? Um, that is... Um, that's there so that if somebody does have an issue with their remittances and um, they don't know how to... Um, how to correct it, then that was to emphasise that the support that was there was either through the Horizon Online Help Facility or that they should contact by telephone the Network Business Support Centre, which was their first point of contact for any support. I mean, at that point when you were looking at this document by 2011, were you aware that anybody was raising particular problems with remittances? Were you hearing anything from the post office, from your line management, from your trainers or from sub-postmasters? No. Nothing? No. Nothing I can recall. Okay. But here it's in bold. Yes. 
uh, and it's uh, relying on essentially the operator <laughs> to identify that a discrepancy they have is related to a remittance uh, and you're telling them to contact in that case the help desk yes so if they spot that there is a problem and it's related to a remittance contact either the horizon help desk and i think we've heard that's hsh but you might not have. is that a yes. acronym yes yeah or the nbsc NBSC, yeah and would it then be up to the help desk whichever one to determine what the problem was and whether it might be user error or a bug um my understanding although i was obviously not involved in that is that the information recorded by the NBSC would then be um, passed on to the um, accounts department within Chesterfield to look at that individual branch. But that's not an area I was involved in, so I, that's just my thoughts. Okay, so just to be absolutely clear, before you looked at this document, you didn't draft it, but you were responsible for oversight yeah. of it. Did anybody discuss with you that there might be bugs in Horizon related to reming? No. Did anybody discuss with you that there might be errors in reming which were not spotted by Horizon? No. As someone who has done remittances and who has used Horizon yourself in a post office, would that have been useful information for you to have had? Yes. Thank you. I don't have any more questions for you, Mr. Gilding. Uh, sir, there are no um, more questions, but just before we end Mr. Gilding's evidence um, session, um, can I just ask for one document to be brought up on the screen? It's poll 302492. the document um, prepared for the high-level meeting with Messrs Arbuthnot and Letwin that I took Mr Gilding to earlier and you'll see that it says that the meeting is scheduled for the 17th of May 2010. Um, that, that is as the document appears. Um, it's been helpfully drawn to our attention that there are um, other versions of the, um, this document which suggest that the meeting was in fact on the 17th of May 2012. I honestly don't know which is the correct date. I, I wasn't oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't inviting a, no, sorry. Um, um, a, a, an answer. I was more addressing this to okay, sorry um, uh, to the chair. No, that's all right. No need to apologise. Um, I, I just um, make that clear. We've got um, in the inquiry uh, literally dozens of versions of um, th this document from various sources. We'll investigate um, uh, uh, that um, error on the face of the document provided by. Um, um, in this case, the post office. But um, All right, Mr. Beer, that's fine. I'm sure we can um, <coughs> satisfy ourselves what the correct date is with appropriate investigations. Yes, thank you very much. So, subject to that, um, that's the end of um, Mr. Gilding's evidence. Thank you, Mr. Gilding. Um, I, I just like to to, to get the um, one thing straight in my mind my mind, if I may, Indeed, and yes. I want you to think about the time period, 2009, when you first began to become involved uh, in a formal sense with um, managing teams of trainers and auditors, mm -hmm. and then 2015, um, when your secondment to the mediation investigation came to an end. So I'm, I'm focusing on that approximately six year period. And you've been asked a number of questions about your own mindset. And I take it that the mindset, uh, 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 your own mindset in relation to the robustness and reliability of Horizon. And I take it from what you've said, that each of the teams you managed in whatever capacity in that same period shared your mindset. Yes, that's correct. To what extent, if at all, was there um, discussions um, as between different teams? In other words, were these teams kind of 
self-contained and just went about their business in a vacuum? Or from time to time, would there be cross-fertilization, if I can put it in that way, between other teams doing the same job? There, there was um, occasions where we would cross over with other teams. Um, so uh, my team in the south would sometimes cross over with the London team. Um, so, yes, there was a crossing over between the teams on occasion. Right. Uh, and in those sessions, was there, was there ever, were there ever any occasions when the reliability or robustness of Horizon came under discussion? Not that I can recall. And so that I don't get a false impression about this, was that because it simply didn't arise? Or was it because, so far as you can judge, every other team shared the same view of Horizon as did you and you a team? Uh, I would say the latter, that everybody shared the same view uh, around the Horizon system. So, so is this a fair point for me to take from your evidence that in this period when you were dealing with teams who were looking into either audit or training or the like, mm -hmm. literally everyone you came across who was engaged in this all had the same view of Horizon? As far as I'm aware, yes. All right, thank you. Thanks very much, um, Mr Gilding, for your uh, willingness to answer a great many questions this morning and for providing your witness statement as well. I'm grateful to you. Thank you. Sir, can we um, say 20 to 2 to start the next witness, please? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much.